I'm Mo Rocca, and I'm excited to announce season four of my podcast, Mobituaries. I've got a whole new bunch of stories to share with you about the most fascinating people and things who are no longer with us. From famous figures who died on the very same day to the things I wish would die, like buffets, all that and much more. Listen to Mobituaries with Mo Rocca wherever you get your podcasts. This episode is brought to you by JLL. Get an insider view into the world of commercial real estate with JLL's podcast, Trends and Insights, the Future of Commercial Real Estate. Whether you're curious about making cities more sustainable, the evolution of office space, or AI opportunities, this podcast will help keep you a step ahead. Tune in for candid conversations with business leaders about the biggest trends impacting how we live, work, and play. Subscribe to Trends and Insights now at jll.com slash podcast. DTT Plus, where you get more of us. Hey, everybody. I'm Kelly Wilkness here with Anita Joyce, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks Plus. And today we're talking apartment hacks. Anita's been doing some magic in an apartment, and she's going to share some of the things and the ideas that she has been implementing to make it absolutely fabulous. Well, this is something when you have a limited budget, my client, who is my daughter, uh, has a very limited budget. She's limited a teacher. Limited budget and a non-paying client. Yes, a non-paying client with no money, where basically I had to pay for half the stuff. <laughs> Well, we need to review your business model, but that's another story. Okay, go ahead. I know. This is probably not the way to do a business. But, uh, you know, there are those clients you have to accept. Uh, So anyway, it was fun to do. And we're still not done. But it, it was so fun. I thought this would make a great episode because I had to come up with some creative solutions. And there's one thing that I found when we were trying to disguise some storage she had. And so the first thing I want to talk about is not something we did, but I think it wouldn't be an amazing a project for an apartment. And that is that uh, makeshift uh, office that, you know, I sent you a picture of that, Kelly, and I thought, you know, we could kind of describe it and we'll include a link to it. But it's a really beautiful and elegant solution if you need a an office and a desk uh, for work maybe, but you but it's kind of a messy area and you want to be able to close it up during the day. Maybe you're working from home and you have to have all this stuff out, but you don't want to see your desk and your computer when you're not working. This would be a great solution. So it starts with one of those uh, metal storage racks that, I mean, I have them in my garage. People have them in their pantry. And I'm not sure well, how else to describe that, Kelly. Do you have a thought on that? No, absolutely. Those are the metal wire ones. Sometimes they're on casters. But um, when you s- said the word makeshift, I thought, oh, no, this. And, but then you said elegant. This is so elegant and beautiful. This is not like you just swept all the stuff off your dining room table and made an office. Like, this is <laughs> really good. And like, I'm thinking this would be it would be great for a, even a closet, too, or like a shoe yes. storage or something. So keep going. It's so great. Yes. So they made a cover for this. Uh, shelf and it's so beautiful it, I mean they really chose some beautiful fabric and trim and basically they did not use the lowest shelf so and put the lowest shelf they put at desk height so that you could pull up a chair in there and use the shelf like a desk and then so basically then you have a couple of uh, shelves up above to put things on but nothing underneath so you could push your chair in there and work but then it's covered with fabric uh, on all th- on three sides and then on the front it's kind of like a tent flap that you roll up and tie up uh, so that's the thing that you can roll down when you're not using it I mean it's like art it's so pretty oh it's so pretty they used a you know the fabric makes it really spectacular but any fabric would be great and you know I am not a sewer of your caliber at all but I mean I think I might be able to even pull this off so I don't know how difficult it might be and you maybe don't have to add all the trims and whatnot so are you going to link that exact image that you sent to me oh yeah everybody should definitely check that out and what a great way to sort of hide away 
not even from your guests, but from yourself, your computer mm-hmm. or your to-do list or your pile of stuff you have to do, and just sort of make it go away in this beautiful manner. And oftentimes in an apartment, you're not even allowed to paint the walls, let alone wallpaper or add some pattern that way. So this is an opportunity to add a sort of a large scale pattern or even just color. And I'm thinking, it looks like maybe in that image, it's kind of in a little alcove, which could be great. But even if it had to be out in the room, if it is on the casters, you could roll it around. <laughs> it's a portable office. <laughs> right? You could roll it. And then when it's closed up, maybe you put it, if you could possibly roll it behind the sofa or something. So mm-hmm. it, you know, it's not taking up a lot of space. So I just thought that was a brilliant idea. I love small space solutions. Uh, you know, so we're calling this apartment hacks, but any small space, you could utilize the ideas that we're uh, going to bring to you today, or really Anita's going to bring to you. Uh, but it, this also reminded me of that funny, well, it's a funny story. I think it's funny, but I don't know if Peter thought it was funny when I made his <laughs> office in a closet where the bifold doors opened up. And I was like, this is perfect. It's a great idea. I've seen oh, it done. It's I We perfect. did it many years ago. I kind of feel like I might have been setting that trend. But, uh, <laughs> but it's so simple with just a piece of plywood. You take the rod off, or I guess you could even leave the rod there. But you put a piece of plywood supported on the three sides uh, at desk level, and then you can slide your chair in there. And it was just those old-fashioned louvered bifold doors. And so when he wasn't in there, when he was in there, you couldn't close it. <laughs> when he was in there, it just looked like a closet. And that was our guest room. What's next? So the reason I was looking at that image in the first place was because she had a garage in her old apartment. And so I directed her to buy some of these shelves. So she has two four feet wide uh, open shelving units. So when in moving into this apartment, there were no garages. Uh, so that's why I was even looking for these covers because she was going to have to bring them into her apartment. I was looking for where she could store all of her stuff and it, there was just no place it was going to fit. And so these, these shelving units were going to have to come into her apartment and you know, she was just worried about it. What am I going to do? Where am I going to put these? And I said, no worries. We'll figure something out, which means mom's going to do this. Mm-hmm. And I was looking at how do you cover them with fabric? And that's how I saw that image. So that was my first idea was to cover it with fabric. And then I'll link also to all these images I found of people who have made covers for the shelves, not making it into an office like that, but kind of just to cover the shelves. And a lot of times there's one fabric on the top and it's lined with another fabric. And then maybe the ties are there to keep the uh, fabric open Mm -hmm. while you're using it. And then you can uh, cover it up when you don't need to access to the shelves. So I've seen a bunch of these covers and that's really what I was planning on doing. Uh, And then using, I was thinking of using a duvet that had one fabric on one side on the top and another on the bottom. And so it would already be made like that. And I was going to sew the pieces together. Mm -hmm. And that was my plan. But I also was thinking, this is going to be a big project. Not because there's so much sewing, but because the fabric pieces are going to be so big. It's, It's a little hard to manage all that. And so then I thought, well, what else can I do to disguise these shelves? And I was looking in her dining area. It's There's a wall that's 10 feet wide. And I thought, well, these shelves are eight feet wide when you put them together. And I thought, what if we just push them back against the wall and just had a curtain in front of them? Mm. And I thought, this is going to be a whole lot less work for me. And I thought it might actually be a better location. Well, we kind of checked it out. And it turns out that there is room to put her table in front of that of the shelves and then still have room to walk by into the living room from the door. And then I thought, oh man, this is going to work. So I looked online and Ikea actually has some ceiling tracks for curtains. And, you know, because this needs to be something, you know, doing a rod pocket on a rod, is not really going to work because you know, you're going to have to open this a lot. Yeah. So it really needs to be something that's easily open. But the ceiling tracks you know, those are meant to be opened and closed a lot. Mm -hmm. So those usually slide open and closed very well. And then the Ikea curtains have the curtain tape on the back so that the hooks just go on the back. 
just like if you had pleated drapes and you would have the hooks that would hold the pleats. So I thought, oh my goodness, this is perfect. Then I went on Ikea, found some fabulous curtains that she loved. And I thought, okay, we are, we are, we are in Off to the here. races. Oh my well, gosh, that's so great. Yeah. So it's black fabric with pink flowers, which is definitely her style. And I think they're pretty nice. $50, I think, for a t- set of two. Hmm. Something like that. I mean, it was a deal. So uh, I'm trying to visualize. So you brought these wire shelving racks Mm -hmm. into the dining room. They're against a wall that, you know, doesn't have any windows. It's a 10 foot wall. 10 foot wide. 10 foot wide. 10 foot wide. Yeah. So they're going to sit there, you Mm -hmm. know, next to each other. And it's going to be enclosed storage and shelving. Well, right. Because the track is just kind of right in front of them. Okay. So when it's closed, I mean, and we still haven't completely finished yet. So when the curtains close, it's just going to look like a, a there's windows back there. It's just going to mm-hmm. be a wall of curtains. Right, right. So to be honest with you, like so many things in design, it's going to end up looking better than if we didn't have a problem. When you have a problem and you come up with a creative solution, often it's more interesting than if you didn't have the problem to begin with. I love that. I love what you just said. And I really wholeheartedly agree Uh, because you put thought into it at time, maybe a little bit of effort, and you've created this great solution. And I'm having that fabulous pattern that Evie loves going from basically floor to ceiling. It's going to be terrific in there. And that's another way to add some color and pattern when you can't paint the walls. Well, right. I mean, it's going to be a wall of this fabric that she loves. And I think it's just going to be a something that's going to make it even more cozy and charming. So I'm kind of excited about seeing it when we get it all finished. Plus, we haven't even discussed the idea that she's going to have so much storage, in, which is often lacking in an apartment. Well, the other thing about doing the curtain is now she can continue to store things on that top shelf. Yeah. Whereas if we made the covers, you would lose that storage. And this Mm -hmm. curtain goes all the way up to the ceiling. So it's going to allow more space. And then she can even tuck things in beside the shelves Mm. as long as it's uh, behind the curtain. So that worked out very well. And even just knowing about the ceiling mount Uh, rods is a good thing because whether or not you're in an apartment or if you're trying to create a storage solution, you may want to delineate a space somehow. And that could be a great solution. Oftentimes you won't have an ability to put a rod with some brackets somewhere, but you'll have a ceiling and you might be able to use it there. I know in our like WC, our toilet area of our uh, master bath, I have put just for decorative purposes, we don't close it because it would just be awkward to do that all the time. But I have a tension rod across in there because I'm able to go wall to wall. Um, And it just kind of comes down and it looks cool and I have it with some chain. And I mean, it looks pretty cool for the, the toilet area. But had I not had wall to wall on either side, giving me the ability to use the tension rod, a ceiling rod would be great. So anybody who's listening to this can think about ways that they might be able to just add some fabric, delineate a space by using a ceiling rod and some beautiful drapes. Right. But you also bring up another idea, and that is these are typically used for windows. So if you had some window where it's going to be very difficult to mount a rod above the window, uh, this this is a great solution for you to hang the curtains from the ceiling. So I think it's a great it's a great option for people. Yeah, good to know. Okay, we'll link that in the show notes as well. Hey, we'll be right back with the rest of the show, but keep listening so we can continue bringing you DTT. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. 
So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfast, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So what next? What did you do after that? Well, when we got there, I was really disappointed because, well, for one thing, the AC wasn't working properly and it was 100 degrees. That was mm. the first disappointment. Now, the good news is they did fix uh, to get it taken care of right away. So, but uh, when we went in the kitchen, I was uh, kind of surprised that the refrigerator had a, several dents on it. And I was like, ooh, this is not good. Now, I will say that like who like who dents a refrigerator? I yes, I don't know, but it, it's dented. <laughs> so I mean, of course, my immediate reaction is I can't have my baby with a dented refrigerator. I mean, who <laughs> lives like this? This is like animals live like this. You know? <laughs> so I was trying to think, you know, what we could do, and again, I found out so much that I didn't know. You can buy uh, basically a vinyl cover. Well, I mean, you have to cut it to size, but like a vinyl cover for your refrigerator. You know, like those uh, pickup trucks or vans you see on the freeway that are advertising a business and maybe mm -hmm. there's a photo on them. Mm -hmm. It's the same sort of technology. It's just kind of a vinyl sheet that's applied to your refrigerator. And that would be a perfect thing to do. Uh, and you can get flowers or, you know, just whatever, a different color, a pattern. I mean, there's so many Oh, on, really? Okay. Yes. So like, like skinning your car. I mean, I've seen people, you know, cars driving around that have done that. And I, I understand what you're saying about you. Know, sometimes it's a, it's a magnetic, you know, Joe's landscaping or whatever can go on the side of the truck. But I've seen cars around LA that are actually completely skinned. Like it That's might what I'm talking about. Pink yeah. uh, and orange polka dots or something like that. Yeah. That's exactly what we're talking about. It's very temporary, meaning it, well, I shouldn't say temporary. It's very reversible. It's very removable. You just mm -hmm. peel it off. So it is the same technology. Now, the downside, once again, was that it's going to be time consuming to apply that because it has to be cut, you know, to fit. Oh, right. And I was thinking, well, my first thought is I'm not the one doing this. Uh, but then I was thinking. Really? You're not? <laughs> I'm not the one going to be doing this. And I thought she's not going to do it either. And then I thought, okay, this is not practical for her. And then I thought, what is something easy she could do? Well, then I found these really cute, large kind of 1960s kind of flower child looking flowers that uh -huh. were magnetic, that are vinyl, that you just pop on there. Well, they look great. 
I mean, oh for her, they're, I mean, they're fun. I mean, it's not, it's not, uh, you know, it's not an elegant look. It's just kind of a fun, quirky look. But she loves, you know, pink and flowers and things. Yeah. So it works for her. But I said, you know, we didn't even ask them to replace this. I said, you know, they were so good about the getting that AC fixed right away. I said, I bet they would switch this out. But she said, well, I like the flowers so much. She said, I'm good with this. So, Oh, how funny. Okay, well, that's great. Oh, wow. Another fun solution. Okay, so one more. I have one more thing that, that we're going to do. So uh, we didn't end up needing to do the desk idea because she actually does have a built-in desk. Now, mm-hmm. it's about three feet wide, and it's basically, it's just like a little section of wall. You know, it's a small section, like I said, about three feet wide. And it does have the built-in desk, and then it has two shelves above it. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, what a great way to add some interest to the room would be to have some wallpaper back there because it's a small section. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, it is an apartment. We cannot, you know, put regular wallpaper on there. And I think the walls were textured also. So I bought some foam core. Mm. And and then what we're planning to do is to cut it to size because basically that wall is three feet wide and then there's three sections. And so so I bought three pieces of foam core. We'll just cut it and just make sure it fits back in the wall between the shelves, you know, one's above the top shelf, one's piece will be between the two shelves, and the other one will be between the desk and the first shelf. And then we can use contact paper because there's some very cute contact papers out there Mm -hmm. now. We can use repositionable wallpaper. We can paint it pink. Uh, So the the options are endless. We'll just push it back there. And then when she moves out, we're just going to pop it out and go on. But meanwhile, she's got this beautiful, fun, a background there for when she's sitting and working. That is brilliant. I mean, I love all the ideas, but that one is so doable. And I think that is going to make such a difference in the room. And I, I just want to highlight what you said about the wall being textured. So maybe it's orange peel. Right. Why was why was that an idea? I don't uh, know. And I mean, it took effort to do that. It, I mean, it would have been... It would have been easier just to put the sheetrock in and just call it a day. I, I don't understand why they put it on walls. I, I really I, don't I'm get having, it. I, this is the third condo I'm doing around Pasadena where we're having that, the whole thing skim coated. What a waste. Because it really does date the space. Plus, it's very hard to put up any wallpaper, whether it be real wallpaper or removable, repositionable wallpaper, because it just doesn't stick right. And you, it w- just will not adhere correctly. Maybe if you got a professional wallpaper or come in and they did heavy coats of adhesive, you might get away with it, but it is better to skim coat if you've got that kind of wall, if you're going to put up a, a wallpaper treatment. So great idea with the foam core, because you co- totally avoid that issue as well. And then I guess the only other thing I can talk about that we are doing in her apartment is lots of cubbies in that closet. Uh, There's just so many uh, creative cubbies and and boxes that stack that you can get on Amazon or Ikea also is a great source for those to organize your clothes and other things in your closet. And it's, it really is very charming. She's done a great job with it. And, uh, yeah, I'm, ex- I'm excited to get all of this done so we can make it just perfect for her. Oh, this is so much fun. I mean, her other apartment was so beautiful, too, with that emerald green sofa and all of that. So definitely send me some pictures, and we'll have links to all the things that Anita talked about today in the show notes. We did want to talk about a question that we received via voicemail, which we love hearing your voices. You hear ours all the time. So let us have a chance to hear yours. When you leave a voicemail, there's an opportunity to put in your email. Please put in your email so we can reply to you. So Beth, we don't have your email. And it was a while ago that you left this voicemail. um, And we're getting to talk to you about the question right now. Beth's question was uh, about making her cabinets appear older. I understand that she has an older home, 1859, so even older than mine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then she's they're putting in a new kitchen and she chose shaker cabinets, which is an excellent choice. And we support that. Mm-hmm. And her question was, well, how to make the cabinets look old and sort of fit in with the era of her home and, you know, I would assume the rest of her decorating. So I was in the same situation here, Beth. I needed to 
have all new kitchen cabinets when we were <laughs> renovating our place, amongst other things. But what I wanted to do is also have that older appearance. Uh, so I had the painters use spray on because that gives you a nice, good firm foundation and painters like to spray on the paint uh, but that has that sort of factory look to it so the last coat the third coat I had them hand brush so you can discern brush strokes on my white cabinets which definitely gives them it's you know it doesn't jump out at you but it definitely supports the older feel of it and definitely d- takes away any of that sort of brand new, you know, out of the factory spray painted look. And then I would also suggest that you really look for some vintage hardware. That's going to go a long way. I did that as well. I found um, some vintage glass knobs and I had to sort of work with, you know, the number that I was able to find literally in a dusty box at the bottom of a shelf in an old hardware store. And then I was able to add some glass that are newer, but using little poles like on things like the trash uh, door and things like that. So hopefully you can find some vintage hardware somewhere, or you could go to places like uh, House of Antique Hardware, where they do a lot of reproductions. Rejuvenation also has a lot of great hardware. So those are the two suggestions that I would have for you to make your shaker cabinets appear older. Third coat, brushed on by hand, and then find some vintage hardware. And I would add to that, you can also go over it with a black glaze. Mm. It's going to darken the paint, and then you're going to see a little bit of black brush stroke across there. Uh, That is an antiquing option that uh, can give it an an aged feel if you really want to do, you know, some of that, um, to do it with paint. And I like your idea of using the brush strokes for that final coat of paint, I think that is a very, um, yeah, that certainly gives it the impression that it's been there for a long time to have those, uh, the paint strokes on there. Because now when the painters are painting, they, I think they put, you know, something in the paint to keep from getting any brush strokes. Right, right. It's, it's more of a, um, a leveler as in a lot of the paints now. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you got to fight against the technology sometimes <laughs> to get an older look. <laughs> well, did you have anything else? No, you hacked it up really well today. That was really fun. (laughs) Well, thanks so much for hanging out with us. And remember, we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Want to talk to us? Well, we really want to talk to you. So let's schedule a design consult. And Nita and I are here to give you individualized, actionable advice on how to create the beautiful home you want and deserve. It's so easy to schedule a design consult with us. Simply click the link in the show notes or head to decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. When we talk to you on the scheduled time, we will be ready with so many great tips, advice, and yes, tricks. So sign up today for a design consult. We can't wait to talk to you.